do a, a solo episode of Bitcoin bottom line taping today. So I just want to answer some early questions. We get a lot of basic questions where people are starting out. One of the first ones is what is a miner? So a miner typically is an ASIC. An ASIC is a about 30 pound shoe box uh, with steel fins on it and stuff like that for cooling. And you plug in the internet here, plug in the power there, and uh, you plug that into your laptop. What you do is you join a mining pool. So a mining pool is effectively a group of computers that all work together to share the hash rate. And as they're sharing their hash rate or putting it into the, you know, the competition to win uh, bl new blocks, whatever hash rate you're bringing, usually the brand new miners are somewhere between 90 and 110 terahashes. Uh, per second, which is just a, a computing speed measure. So um, just imagine it's like horsepower or something like that. Basically, for every 100 terahashes, you're averaging around 0 0.02 Bitcoin per month in terms of how much you will actually win. But the key is to get as many miners as possible so you have as many chances of participating. And um, that's very important. So there's competing pools. There's slush pool, F2 pool, ant pool, a couple other ones, Foundry, a couple different ones that are kind of like headquartered or, you know, the software is developed in America or Europe or Asia. And a lot of those pools, like especially F2 pool and slush pool, have been around for about 10 years. Uh, and that what that's done is it's allowed people to share the winnings every 10 minutes or so. There's a block and the winner gets 6.25 Bitcoin. So if you're participating in that pool, then you will get your share of whatever you're putting in the network. So when I'm talking to people about this, it's really, for me, the best thing I can say is, is just imagine you're a farmer and you have 10 acres of almonds and your friend has 10 acres of almonds and their friend has 10 acres of almonds and somebody else. So eventually you have 40 acres of almonds that you represent as part of the group. So together you can go to the market and say, hey, we have this many almonds to sell. And then you guys sort of work together as, as a clique in order to, you know, pr preserve your negotiating power. If you were just mining with like one ASIC or something like that on your own, not using a pool, you would have a statistically near impossible chance of winning uh, a block just because there's so many other computers competing. So I personally mine on one pool and uh, slush pool and slush pool uh, allows you to actually split dividends. So you could have like five or six people buy a bunch of miners and then everybody gets a share of the 16%, 20%, whatever it is that you decide based on what they've contributed financially or hash power wise or whatever. Um, a lot of people started off mining at home. They used to mine on their laptops or GPUs, but as the network has grown, as Bitcoin has got more competitive, more lucrative, there's been more specialization. The last generation of miners, like the M20 from What's Miner and the S9 from uh, uh, Ant Miner, basically, uh, those ones were sort of in the 12 to 15, 18 uh, terahash range per second. And the new generation ones, are more like 80, 90, 100. Um, and then the next generation ones that they just announced at the Dubai Mining Council meeting, uh, those are gonna be uh, 140. So that'll be the S19 XP. And the really interesting thing is, as there's a lot of conversation around how much energy Bitcoin uses, a lot of it is calculated based on what the hash rate is. So if the global hash rate is X and there's so many machines online, they sort of try to divide an imaginary number to say, okay, how many are S19s, how many are S9s, how many are what's miners, you know, all these other different things. Each of those have, has a different electrical um, efficiency. So the new S19 XP is going to be using about 3,100 uh, watts um, and that is, but it's making 140 terahashes. So the, the watts to terahash ratio is, is, is really a, a lot different than if you're on the S nines, which is basically two generations ago now, uh, that came out about five years ago. And those ones are like 12 or 13 terahashes and they will be about 1600 Watts. So you need to use a lot more of those machines to get the same effect in terms of your hash rate. And so what happens is as electricity prices change, you see people sort of maybe turn miners off or whatever as Bitcoin and the electricity price are sort of this thing. The miners have to figure out, will we be profitable at this with the source that we're using? And a lot that's why a lot of people are popping up with these co-location services. So one of the best things about the co-location services, uh, Compass is an example of that. Uh, you basically buy a miner, plug it in at their warehouse. You don't ever touch it. And you, you log in 
and give them your pool ID and you come up with a pool account. And then basically you're just hashing and you don't have to hear the fans. These things are really loud. Um, behind me is an example. I have some, some GPU miners. Let's see, dance out of the way here. So I've, I've got some old GPU miners that you can hear. I don't really use this office and it gets cold in the winter. So I just have them on and it's not really a big deal, but those are really like basic as opposed to um, the newer ones, which are like full on computers. And the cost has gone up a lot as, as Bitcoin's gone up, there's more competition for the mining and you're seeing people come up with really new innovative ways of accessing power. So one of those ways is they're using waste fuel. Uh, there's farmers that are using pig poop and cow poop. And they're taking the, the, the actual, you know, turds and getting the, the methane, out, extracting the methane, burning the methane, and then converting that to electricity. Um, it's, a, it's a very similar process to what people use on an oil field. Typically, an oil rig will be pulling oil out of the ground, and then there'll be some other area where they would vent the natural gas. If you don't vent the natural gas, you can have explosions because natural gas is, you know, explosive. And so what they would do is they would do like a controlled burn. So if you're in West Texas or Pennsylvania or Kentucky, any of these places that has natural gas, you'd be like driving down the highway and you look over and you see this like big pipe coming out of the ground with like a flame on top, like a candle. That's They're just burning that because they're too far away to actually sell that natural gas, which by the way, is the natural gas that you cook with, just so we're just all in the same frame of mind. And if, if you can't send that into the city for heating, you know, running water heaters, uh, running boilers to make municipal water um, warm so you don't have pipes freezing and breaking in the wintertime, then they just burn it off. And so entrepreneurial miners for the last couple of years have been looking for ways to do this. And now there's just more and more sophisticated layers to this. And you have companies that are actually, you know, installing, uh, you know, on the smallest end, like an old V8 engine, you know, like an old Chevy V8 or old Ford V8 engine that runs on it, um, that runs on natural gas and turns that into electricity. And then they, they build like a little hut with ASICs, you know, stacked in there right on an oil field. One of the funniest things is that, you know, imagine you have like this image of like an oil, oil guy. And he's also like interacting with these Bitcoin people, which are very kind of high tech. People think of these Bitcoin guys as like hackers or whatever. But realistically, mining is a very industrial process. And so it really comes down to efficiency, uh, engineering, airflow, cooling, a lot of these things. There's innovation around immersion. There's a lot of companies that are in America. There's a company in Austin, a company in Houston. Um, they're doing immersion mining. Uh, and that's where you basically take one of these things, take the fans off and you just dunk it in water, not water, but it's, it's, it's called dielectric fluid. And it's basically like, you create a big radiator like for a car and you take all the heat by circulating the, the dielectric fluid well enough and it actually preserves the miners and allows them to run faster. So if you're running like the Brains OS update on an S9, you can probably get like 17 or 18 terahashes out of, a, out of an S9 that's generally more like a 12 or 13 terahash model. Um, so when Riot blockchain um, is building a huge 200 megawatt facility or something like that in Texas, they're actually running the whole thing on immersion. So they're they're banking on the fact that as you immerse as you immerse the coolers or the, you know you immerse the the miners in a cooling fluid in Texas it's the heat is less of an issue but you're also preserving the the length the life length of the miner. So if these miners if an average like let's say S19 makes somewhere in like 0 0.02 bitcoin per month every month you can extend that life before you have to replace it with another one is a massive capital win. So it's just like any other business where you're really looking to make efficiency a thing. And some of these guys are getting electricity down in like four cents, five cents. Um, and that's just because the way the power grid's built out in that in that area. In California, where I live, electricity is like 30 cents, 40 cents. So it's really like not as it's not very profitable to mine. But um, recently, I uh, partnered with somebody that has a uh, an oil Institute uh, installation. So we have a, a shipping container running on an oil uh, oil field and I'm pretty excited. So last night um, I just had 12 more miners come online. So I'm pretty excited about that. But overall mining is one of the most innovative things. And it's one of the most interesting things politically as states are competing. So states like Wyoming, Texas, Kentucky, Nebraska, Pennsylvania, um, New York, 
uh, there's all these places that have either cheap power from hydroelectric or they might have coal mining or they might have something there. They have this energy source and they don't know what to use it for. And you have Bitcoin is just like willing, I'll take it. I'll take whatever power you can give me. And then they sort of scale their operations onto that. And with Bitcoin, obviously trading at 40, 50, $60,000 this year, it's a pretty lucrative time to be a Bitcoin miner. And as more people industrialize it, you know, it's really funny to see that someone posts a, uh, they post a meme on Twitter saying, oh, we bought the dip. We bought five Bitcoin or 10 Bitcoin or whatever. And you have companies that are mining 100 or 200 Bitcoin a month. Um, so it's pretty impressive. It's one of the most, I would say, Wild West things about Bitcoin right now is when China basically banned Bitcoin mining, then there's a significant amount of machines that were then deemed like unable to be used because China wanted to, you know, make it illegal to make, make sure that their citizens weren't mining Bitcoin and getting freedom money effectively. So now all of a sudden America has the majority of mining hash rate, which never has happened. It was always China for the longest time. And one of the things that people complained about was to say, oh, well, China controls Bitcoin because of this, that, and the other thing. Now it's pretty obvious that China hates Bitcoin. And um, they finally succeeded in booting mining out of China, at least on a large scale basis. And people are coming here. They're going to Wyoming. They're going to Texas because they like the barbecue. Uh, they want to do cowboy stuff, you know. So, so now a lot of those machines are coming to America. Insert Eddie Murphy. Uh, and um, yeah, that's it. That's so. That's kind of the whole mining thing in a in a very basic uh, 101.